I just want to welcome all of you guys to Seller Summit 2020. Uh, I'm a little bit sad that we aren't meeting face to face, but I think the way we have it right now, it is the best thing that we could possibly make of it. All right. And first thing I want to talk about is the elephant in the room, which is coronavirus. I know that most of us are locked down at home. I've actually been locked down for the past six weeks. But overall, I just want to say that I've seen this as a positive experience overall. Um, so I've been going on walks with my family uh, two to three times every single day. And on those walks, you know, we, we talk. And so I feel like I've actually gotten to know my family a little bit better, especially my kids. And I feel like we, we're communicating more. We're having two meals a day together, lunch and dinner every single night. Uh, the only negative that I can possibly see about this right now is that, you know, I'm obviously stuck at home and I've been eating the exact same food every single day. And, you know, one thing, there's a lot of restaurants in my area, really nice restaurants, three Michelin star restaurants that are offering these really great bargains. So this is one up in San Francisco, a three Michelin star restaurant for only $40 per person. Problem is, by the time you take it home, it doesn't taste as good. So I had brought it up to my wife, Jen, that we should just take some lawn chairs and a table and just dine in the parking lot of these really nice restaurants. And uh, just quick show of hands who just put in the live chat whether you think that is a good idea because my wife wants nothing to do with that idea. But I really want to eat some good food. Unfortunately, it's just not going to happen. Maybe you guys can help convince her otherwise. Uh, but aside from that, what I want to do right now first, just to kind of kick off the Seller Summit, is show you what it's like in the day in the life of the Chu family. What is love? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me no more. Rinse and repeat every single day like that for the past six weeks. Uh, I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about some sales numbers that we've had. So this is a graph of the statistics of March uh, compared to the week of February 3rd of 2020. And this is just Amazon statistics here. And as you can see, everything is mostly up. Everything except for clothing, shoes, and jewelry. But in general, the trend has been up for everything on Amazon. And these are just ending March 30th of this year. Now, if you look at which items are selling well and which ones are not, you'll notice here, and these are statistics between the sales from March 2020 versus March of 2019. And you'll notice like disposable gloves and bread machines of all things, along with food, weights, fitness goods, pain relievers, 
all the essential items are generally up like triple digits across the board. And the industries that have been down, and this is just the March numbers, uh, anything travel related, cameras, men's formal wear, party and event supplies are way down, drones, golf clubs, coolers. Uh, unfortunately, our online store, we cater to the wedding industry and you know no one's really getting married right now. But you can get an idea of what it's been like for sales during this whole coronavirus thing. It's mainly been focused on essentials. And what I'm gonna talk about a little bit later are the new essentials that people are actually buying. And so if you look at our store, I just kind of pulled a little graph off of Google Analytics. Our revenue was doing great. And then it started going down in March as soon as all this coronavirus thing started happening. And as I mentioned before, we are in the wedding industry. And so we actually reached our lowest point in daily revenue starting on March 22nd. And I remember when when you know the sales got that low on March 22nd, I was talking to my wife and I was like, what are we going to do here? You know, sales are really low. I know people will eventually get married, but this is going to be tough in the interim because sales are dramatically down. And so fortunately, my wife is extremely creative. And so what we did is we pivoted a little bit. So not soon after we hit our lowest point, my wife put together a really incredible blog post on how to create a DIY face mask with handkerchiefs, no sewing required. And what we did is we actually launched a promotion where we actually gave away a free handkerchief and we actually gave these instructions along with it so that you could actually make a free mask with your handkerchief. And the handkerchiefs that we were giving out obviously weren't our best handkerchiefs, but these are ones that we had. Uh, and the ones that we actually chose weren't really necessarily our best sellers. And by giving it out free, not only was it a nice gesture for our customers, but it actually enticed them to come to our site and make other purchases of handkerchiefs, perhaps that they could actually make into a mask. And we actually ran, we've run, we've been running this promotion for the past three weeks now, and it has been a huge hit. The other thing that we did is we actually pivoted towards uh, quarantine gifts. So we sell linens and prior to that, all the products on our site had been angled and targeted towards weddings. So we sell personalized products on our website. And prior to this, all the sayings on these handkerchiefs and these linens have been wedding related, like Steve and Jen, you know, 2003 and that sort of thing. And so what we did is we actually created an entirely new category just for quarantine gifts. And my wife came up with these or she grabbed them from the internet. But, you know, quarantini, uh, let's party like it's COVID-1999 because quarantine. Remember, alcohol kills germs. And these products were the exact same products we were already carrying in our store. But the fact that we kind of positioned them in a different way, these turned out to be a huge hit. And I think quarantini actually is one of our best sellers now. And these handkerchiefs, you know, instead of just sending cards to people, people actually started writing messages on handkerchiefs to make it a little bit extra special to send out to their loved ones. And all these products caused our, so this is our lowest point right here. And we released at first that blog post and we started doing that giveaway. And then later on, we started releasing quarantine gifts and lo and behold, right now we are back in business up to the same levels that we were at before this whole coronavirus thing started. So uh, there's, there's other examples also of people who were who have been able to pivot. Uh, a longtime Seller Summit attendee, Amanda Wittenborn, she typically sells invitations and party supplies. And obviously during this whole coronavirus thing, people weren't having parties. And so what she did is she pivoted her business very cleverly, started designing cards from teachers to students, or just cards like thinking of you and that sort of thing. And you know, basically her business had ground to a halt probably around the same time that mine did. But then she pivoted her business, went to Merchant Fulfilled, and lo and behold, this is a picture of her husband hauling out over 400 pounds of cards during this whole coronavirus thing. When she started, basically when her business ground to a halt, all of a sudden it was back in business and she was forced to do Merchant Fulfilled, but I think her house right now is like a factory. You saw my kids working in that video. I think Amanda has all of her kids on staff working all day, every day. All right, and so I also had the luxury of contacting some of the sponsors who are sponsoring the Seller Summit because all these tools out there like Klaviyo, they have data about their sellers, right? And so Klaviyo, what, what they've been doing, they've been doing something really special and I actually encourage you to go over to the Klaviyo.com website. They've actually compiled statistics on over 30,000 sellers, uh, including people that have sent in surveys about their sales. 
and they've really nicely collated all this data for you. And so I pulled this one a couple of days ago, so it's a little bit out of date, a couple of days out of date, of orders over time of all of the Klaviyo customers. And I think there's over 30,000 30, of them right now at this moment. And you'll notice is that all the sales are trending up. Now there's a slight dip you know, in the middle of March, but since then it has been shooting up like a rocket. Now Klaviyo isn't the only one who, who's reported these statistics. Gorgeous, who is also a sponsor of the Seller Summit, sent me these stats. And you'll notice here that there's a huge peak over here in April, whereas things were initially going down in March, but things are just looking way up for e-commerce overall. And I found this statistic on the web in terms of Shopify global traffic. And just to give you an idea, this is just traffic, not sales, but traffic usually is an indicator of sales. So this is what it's like during a typical Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And this is the middle of April coronavirus. And what you'll notice is if you draw a straight line here, the coronavirus sales are the same as Black Friday sales, Black Friday, Cyber Monday. So basically it is Black Friday every single day right now during this whole coronavirus thing. And I just saw this article just the other day. Um, online shopping has overtaken a major part of retail for the first time ever. Now, obviously that's not surprising since we are all stuck at home and we can't actually physically go shop in a store. But this graph on the right is particularly interesting because prior to this whole coronavirus thing, the e-commerce as a percentage of retail sales was expected to hit you know, maybe 13, 14% in 2020. But now it's actually been revised and e-commerce as a percentage of total retail sales is now you know, predicted to hit 18 plus percent in the next year, mainly because this whole coronavirus thing is going to set a new normal for e-commerce. I also talked to my buddies over at Mute6, uh, Steve Weiss, he's spoken at Seller Summit in the past, and he gave me these statistics and Facebook ad CPMs have plummeted over 25%. So Mute6 is they're an agency and they run ads for people. And you'll notice here that in the beginning of March, CPMs were like $9. And now, you know, in the beginning of April, they're only like six bucks. And what that means is, you know, a lot of these large brands are pulling out of their large advertising spend, which leaves the smaller guys like us able to advertise at a much, much lower price, 25% cheaper. I know for my store, ads are so much cheaper right now on both Google as well as Facebook. All right. And so Overall, what I'm trying to say here is that this is actually the best time to be in e-commerce today. I'll just tell you a couple of stories. You know, my, my mom, she usually likes to go out for grocery shopping and that sort of thing. But ever since this whole coronavirus thing, she's actually gotten used to using Instacart to buy her groceries. She's getting used to shopping online. And I anticipate that even when we have a vaccine, even when we have a cure for this whole coronavirus thing, people are gonna be a little bit more hesitant to go out and shop in a retail store. And even if the retail stops all open up, they're only gonna be running at like 25% capacity. And there's probably gonna be these distancing requirements as well. And so what does that mean? This whole e-commerce surge is here to stay for the long haul. All right, and so by taking part in the Seller Summit today, this is actually the best time ever to actually try to grow your e-commerce business and thrive. So the timing could not be better, even though we can't see each other live. But not everything was always has been rosy. Now, uh, for all of you guys who sell on Amazon, you know that Amazon actually suspended shipments of non-essential items to warehouses. This was in the middle of March. And all of a sudden, you know, because we weren't able to fill our inventory, a lot of things went out of stock. And you know, merchants who had the capability to go merchant fulfilled were forced to actually ship out their own goods. And initially they suspended shipments until April 5th, but even on April 5th, a lot of people were not still able to send their items to their warehouses. And even today, it's, it's May now, um, for our products, um, we're only allowed to send in quantity for certain items in our product portfolio and certain other items are still limited. Uh, mainly because Amazon is swamped. And for all of you who are kind of reliant on Amazon FBA, obviously this is a huge deal. Um, this is an article I found in Wired Magazine. Amazon's new essential items uh, policy is devastating sellers. And quoted in this article was our buddy Bernie uh, over at Pluggable. And uh, 
you know, a lot of these e-commerce stores who are entirely reliant on Amazon FBA, they don't have the infrastructure to ship out goods themselves. So guess what? Because Amazon is making these restrictions, a lot of these vendors are hurting. And in fact, uh, you know, these restrictions are killing off a lot of third party sellers if you are not able or if you don't have the facility to actually fulfill items on your own. Right. And uh, I promised I mentioned I, I promised I would mention Carol in today's presentation. Uh, this is something that happened, I think, uh, middle of last year, where if you did a search, this is Carol's product, which is Emu Oil uh, over at Emu Joy. And if you were to do a search for her product, Emu Oil, and you were on her site, you would notice that Amazon actually has an equivalent item, the exact same ingredients for just a fraction of the price. And in this case, it's like a third off of what Carol was selling it for. And this is an Amazon branded product. And just the other day, I was searching for Glad Bags, and lo and behold, right underneath these Glad Bags were Amazon branded bags that were a fraction of the price as well. So guess what? What did I buy? I bought the Amazon brand bags because who cares, right? A garbage bag is a garbage bag. I'm gonna throw it away no matter what, all right? And uh, the reason why I'm pointing this out to you, and I've already pointed this out last year in my keynote last year, is that finally, I, and I was shocked to hear this news, shocked, totally shocked. Amazon has been scooping up data from its own sellers to launch their own competing products. We have all known that this has been happening for the longest time. And I'm so glad that someone finally able, was able to actually call them out on this practice because it is happening. Uh, if you have a product that is a bestseller on Amazon, they have all your data. And if your product is deemed worthy enough for them to launch a knockoff product of, they will. They're looking at your data. And to me, this is like anti-competitive practices. And I hope they crack down on this practice. Uh, not only that, uh, I think one of our attendees, Rick, he's on the Shopify platform. And he was just trying to sell some masks. And he wasn't purposely marking them up high. It's just his cost of goods were very high. And Shopify prevented him from selling his items on the platform. Because if you read the terms of service, Shopify actually enforces fair pricing. You can't charge unfair or deceptive prices for your products. And to me, this kind of blew my mind because, you know, when you're when you're on your own shopping cart platform, you should be able to sell what you want and at what price that you want. And the fact that Shopify stepped in here and prevented Rick from selling his products, this to me was a clear violation of what it means to actually shop on a third-party shopping cart platform. All right, so what does that mean? What does that mean for all of us? It means it's time for us to take control. Now, this isn't really what it's like every day here, but I, I got my kids to uh, make me feel like I was a boss for a single day here. And incidentally, this happened when my wife was uh, out of town on a girl's trip. So this is a while back, but I got my kids to actually serve me and clean up the house for an entire day. But my point here is, is that if you are relying on Amazon for all of your sales, and this is a slide just for Tony because she loves Tiger King so much, you do not actually own anything. So what that means is if you are relying on a single marketplace that you do not control, you do not in fact own your e-commerce business. All right, and so everything that I'm saying up till this point is framing the sessions that I'm gonna be presenting at Seller Summit today. All right, and so the focus of Seller Summit 2020 is about marketing your brand. Now there's three different ways to market your brand and all the talks have been carefully selected to fall into these categories. So the first type of marketing is called earned marketing. And these are the marketing methods that you earn. These include like word of mouth, uh, other people sharing your products, uh, media mentions, social media mentions, and other people reviewing your products. Now the probably the most important way to market your site is through owned marketing. And these are properties that you own that you can actually use to market your site. So for example, having your own e-commerce store platform is a form of owned marketing. Having a blog is a form of owned marketing. Your email list is a form of owned marketing. SMS, your content pages, all these properties that are ones that you own and that you have full control over. Now, a kind of a hybrid between earned and owned are other marketing platforms. For example, like SEO 
once you get ranked for in search for a certain keyword term, chances are you will rank for that term in the long term. I actually have terms for my e-commerce store that have ranked for over 10 years now, and the rankings have not moved. Uh, organic Facebook traffic is another form of owned and semi-earned income. Um, you're building up your audience, even though Facebook owns it and controls it, you can still get free traffic that way. Facebook Messenger, another way to build up a subscriber list in which you can actually send marketing messages is something that is also semi-owned. And then YouTube marketing, you're putting out these videos and you're getting free traffic from Google, very similar to SEO in that respect. And finally, you have to learn how to do paid marketing. So Facebook ads, Google ads, Amazon pay-per-click ads, remarketing ads, native ads, influencer marketing. We are gonna cover all of these circles in Seller Summit 2020. All right, so let's start with owned marketing. So what is owned marketing? This is where you actually control the entire experience. And I just wanna say now that if you have your own e-commerce store, or if you're even just selling on Amazon right now, and if you're not doing email marketing, you are missing out on a ton of sales. So for us, email represents over 30% of our revenues every single year. And most of those are to actually repeat customers. And this is, and by talking about repeat customers, this is money that we're earning every single year already in the bank, right? So if you're not doing email marketing, then get started right now because you're missing out on a ton, of, a, a ton of money. SMS is something that's become really popular in the past year. And I've been actually implementing SMS for my store as well. So if you don't know what SMS is, it's essentially a text message. Now you might be thinking to yourself, man, you know, I would hate to get marketing messages on my phone. But think about it this way. Uh, the last time you made some sort of retail purchase, let's say you got a receipt in your text message and you didn't really mind that, right? And if you really like the brand enough, then if you get a text with a really good deal, you're not gonna get mad at that either, right? So SMS, these are some things that you just kind of have to get over. SMS is gonna be the next big thing. Uh, content marketing, when you're writing blog posts on your blog or sales content, you own all of that and you control all of that. Semi-owned marketing, SEO, as I talked about before, ranking in the search engines lasts a long time, uh, Facebook Messenger and YouTube marketing as well. All right, so here are the talks that we're gonna be presenting. So Andrea Wan from Clavio is gonna teach us how to use SMS marketing to grow your business. All right, as I mentioned before, I'm going all in on SMS because I think it's gonna be the next big owned platform. Jeff Oxford, uh, I saw this guy speak over at ECF excellent speaker. He packs a ton of valuable, actionable content into all of his talks. He's going to teach us how to grow our organic search traffic for your e-commerce store. And the thing about Jeff is he actually focuses on e-commerce for his SEO agency. Nataka, <laughs> Natasha Takahashi, she runs the School of Bots, and she's going to show us how to leverage chatbots to grow our e-commerce store. I've been giving a lot of talks on Facebook Messenger in the past year. And Facebook Messenger, at least for the blog, makes up more than, or just about 50% of my revenues. And for my e-commerce store, every time I send out a broadcast, I'm getting like a seven or eight X return on ad spend. So if you aren't using Facebook Messenger, which is another semi-owned property, you might wanna consider trying it out. Drew Sanaki, he actually spoke at the first Seller Summit and we're really happy to have him back again. And his talk comes with great timing. He's gonna teach us how to make your business recession proof. And believe me, a lot of that has to, has to do with own marketing and leveraging the resources that you actually are in control of. And then finally, Austin Bronner. Uh, Austin and I, we've known each other for a long time. He runs the e-commerce influence podcast, very knowledgeable. He also runs brand growth experts. He's gonna teach us how the top e-commerce businesses scale up and what you can learn from them. And over the years, Austin has worked with a ton of different companies and he's got a wide breadth of knowledge in helping a lot of different types of e-commerce companies. All right, and don't forget, as Tony mentioned before, there's a tab up top where you're gonna be able to actually book time with the sponsors if you want a demo. Klaviyo just released their SMS product. And if you're not on Klaviyo already for e-commerce, I would say that Klaviyo is probably one of the de facto standard tools for marketing, owned marketing in general. Klaviyo owns owned marketing. So if you're already on email, it makes sense to jump on their SMS product, mainly because they already have all of your order information already, and it just makes sense to add SMS to the mix. Zipify is run by my buddy Ezra Firestone. 
Um, when you are creating your own online store, it's important to make it look great and trustworthy. And Zipify is a page builder for Shopify that makes your pages look amazing. There's a whole bunch of pre-built templates as well. Um, he also has one-click upsell as well in addition to that product. And Big Commerce actually has become my shopping cart of choice. And let me tell you why. So I get questions every single day about integrating a blog with your online store. And the problem with Shopify is that if you want a WordPress blog integrated with your Shopify store, you actually have to put it on a subdomain, which is not ideal for SEO. But Big Commerce has actually released a really awesome WordPress uh, integration where you can actually have your blog on WordPress and your store on WordPress all in the same domain in a subfolder. So you get all the SEO benefits and Big Commerce is equally as powerful as Shopify. And then finally, PicFu, they were a sponsor last year. They are a polling company. And by polling, I mean you can actually solicit feedback from real humans within 15 minutes about anything. So let's say I want to launch a new Amazon product, for example, and I'm trying to decide between two images. I can post these two images on PicFu and say, hey, I want Amazon sellers for women over the age of 35 to tell me which photo would be more likely for them to purchase. And within 15 minutes, you'll get that data. All right, so these are the sponsors uh, for owned marketing. Now for paid marketing, and I know a lot of you guys who are attending are primarily making most of your money on Amazon, and you wanna dabble, actually you wanna transition over to owning your own e-commerce store. And guess what, when you launch your own e-commerce store, it is going to be crickets for a while, unless you can master paid ads to jumpstart your brand. So that includes Facebook ads, uh, Google ads, Amazon ads, and here's the thing, even if you only sell on Amazon and most of your sales are on Amazon, by running ads to your own e-commerce store, there's gonna be this halo effect from Amazon. And there's this talk that was given at my buddy Nick's event called Geek Out LA, where a presenter came up, he's primarily Amazon, he was running Facebook ads, and he was only getting like a 1.5X or 2X return on ad spend, but he noticed that his Amazon sales blew up by 200% as a result of his ads efforts. So what that means is even if you aren't seeing really good returns on your own store, there's gonna be a halo effect with your Amazon sales as well. And finally, influencer marketing is gonna be even more important going forward because influencers, for a brand new brand, you need someone to back it up in order for someone to actually want to buy from you. All right, so speaking of Nick, uh, Nick, man, I really like this guy. I'm so glad that Ezra introduced me to you, Nick, if, you guys, if you're watching this. Uh, Nick throws an awesome event called Geek Out LA, and this guy, he's a master of Facebook ads. And he's gonna be talking about scaling Facebook ads through hidden audiences. And I don't wanna give it away, but he's gonna talk about influencer marketing here and how you can meld the two together to really blow up your sales. Nick is, Nick is amazing, and I highly advise that you actually attend his talk. Brett Curry, he's spoken at the last two seller summits. He's like my go-to guy uh, when it comes to Google Ads and, and Amazon. So he's gonna be talking about mastering Google Ads for Amazon. So this is running Google Ads for your Amazon products and sponsored brand video ads, which is a new ad, ad medium that is really killing it right now. It, it's got a very high return on ad spend right now, probably the highest, which is what Brett was telling me. So go to, go to Brett's talk if you wanna learn about these new uh, new ways to market your business. Edward Ruffin, otherwise known as PPC Ed, um, he's actually my go-to guy for Amazon pay-per-click marketing. And he's gonna talk about how to use sales funnels to maximize your advertising on Amazon. And I don't know uh, if Edward's gonna talk about this, but I actually turned over my entire Amazon advertising account over to him over at Seller Labs. And he actually ran my Amazon account and I actually compared my results with his and I wrote a blog post on it. So if you guys are even thinking about uh, outsourcing your Amazon pay-per-click, then you might wanna consider these guys because they do a really good job. If you want actual numbers, um, I'll post a link to my blog post that literally compares side-by-side -side my efforts versus theirs. Be sure to catch his talk as well because he's gonna talk about all the little tricks they use to maximize their advertising. And Alana, she actually spoke last year as well. Now, I mentioned a whole bunch of advertising methods, Facebook, Google, Amazon, influencer marketing, native advertising. There's a whole bunch of things into play. And what Alana is gonna do is she's gonna help you kind of decipher the paid traffic puzzle and kind of help you figure out which ad platform best fits your business 
And she's also going to talk about YouTube ads as well, which is something we haven't covered in the past. So be sure to catch her talk. Incidentally, this talk is based on, I think she, she got the number one talk. This was her number one talk at the last event that she went to. So I asked her to make modifications specifically for the Seller Summit audience. And the tools of the trade here, Seller Labs, they've been a longtime sponsor of the Seller Summit. And I really trust these guys, so much so that I gave PPC Ed control of my entire Amazon advertising account. And he did a great job managing that account. And so if you guys are looking for the best Amazon tools around for managing pay-per-click, or if you just want to outsource your entire pay-per-click, Amazon pay-per-click over to a third party at a reasonable price, and then go to Cello Labs. All right, earn marketing, which is actually something that we haven't really talked about in prior seller summits. Now, word of mouth marketing is actually very important for an e-commerce store. And um, your word of mouth efforts, uh, you can't get media mentions, reviews, social shares, unless you have a strong recognizable brand. And part of becoming a strong recognizable brand means having a brand story. Also, becoming a really powerful brand also means that you actually have to have excellent customer service as well. So for earned marketing, here are the talks that are, we're gonna, that are gonna occur. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention that uh, when it comes to buying from an e-commerce store, like it's different from buying on Amazon, right? Everyone already knows who Amazon is, but when you have your own e-commerce store, no one knows who you are right away. And when it comes to buying at boutiques, people tend to buy from who they like. So here's some examples here. This woman, her name is Tati. I don't, I don't follow her, but my wife follows her religiously. This woman, all she does is she has a YouTube channel about makeup. And if you know my wife, she actually doesn't wear any makeup. She's just got this natural beauty that doesn't require makeup. But she follows this one religiously and she buys her products, even though she doesn't wear it at all. So I think we've got all these makeup palettes in our bathroom right now that are I don't even know if they're opened, mainly because she loves this woman so much. Another example of this is our buddy, Eric Banholtz, who's gonna be speaking about uh, YouTube marketing here. Uh, just to give you an example here, he, so he sells products for beards. And uh, I actually own a number of beard, band, beard brand products, and I don't even have a beard. And in fact, I've been growing this baby for the last two years. So someday, Eric, I hope to be able to use your products uh, to its fullest potential. But I love your videos, man. I love what you've done with your YouTube channel. Uh, our kids, uh, Kid in Charge, we sell t-shirts. And the reason we've been able to make sales is not because the t-shirts are anything special, to be quite honest with you. Uh, we've been able to sell these t-shirts because our kids are lovable. People love our kids. People love the videos that they put out. And uh, just here's an idea of a video that we put together on their customer service practices. Even though we're only nine and 11 years old, we're very serious about our business. We care about you and customer service is our top priority. After all, we want you to be happy with our products and we'll do whatever it takes to make sure that you are satisfied. All orders will be shipped out in a timely manner, even if we have to stay up past our bedtimes. If I have to postpone my piano lessons and math homework for you to get your merchandise, I will. My sister and I are fully committed to Kid in Charge and that is our promise to you. Thank you for your support. All right, so that was a lie, actually. Um, they are not allowed to skip their piano lessons or not do their homework to ship out orders. But uh, you get the point, right? It's all about expressing yourself and humanizing your business. And we've got an elite line of speakers for this. So Michael Jamond, he's actually been the screenwriter for really popular shows online like Beavis and Butthead. There's a whole long list of them. But he's going to talk about how to use the power of storytelling to boost your brand. He's actually turned, his wife has a dress shop and he's used the power of story to grow it to a multi-million dollar business. And I've actually, both Tony and I had the pleasure of seeing this guy speak at ECF, by far one of the best talks that I'd been to. Eric Banholtz, which I'd mentioned already, he's been getting a lot of his sales from YouTube marketing. And we actually haven't talked a whole lot about YouTube marketing. And I actually have a keen interest in this because I just launched my YouTube channel. But he's going to teach us the secrets to marketing your e-commerce products uh, on YouTube. And YouTube actually drives over 40% of his sales.
And Eric's an excellent speaker. Just saw him speak at Clavio. He's awesome. And then Derek. Um, I don't know if you guys know Derek. Uh, he used to be, I've known Derek for a long time. He used to be really big in the blogging space, but then he's pivoted over to e-commerce. And in just a couple of years, he's turned his business into a multi-million dollar business, starting from ground zero. And the way he did that was through the power of story. So he's going to talk about 250,000 orders in two years. And the way he's achieved those numbers is with this awesome story that he's told with his e-commerce business. Derek is one of the best speakers that I've ever seen. So make sure you catch his presentation live. It is awesome. And then Gorgeous. Um, Gorgeous is an e-commerce customer service tool. I use it religiously. This is the only way that Tony and I are actually able to manage all the businesses that we manage. Gorgeous allows you to manage all of your social media platforms. So Instagram, Facebook, Facebook groups of your own customer service through email, whatever, all in a single interface. And what's nice is that as soon as someone emails you or messages you, right on the right-hand column is exactly what they ordered if they are in fact a customer. So the most common question that I get asked is, you know, where's my order? And within one click, because Gorgeous is tied to your e-commerce shopping cart, within one click of the mouse, you can instantly send in all the tracking information and whatnot in a macro, and this will cut down on your customer service costs. We were actually able to get rid of one full employee uh, because Gorgeous is, allows us to so efficiently manage our customer service. So be sure to go check out Gorgeous if you are not using them already, because quite frankly, managing all of your social media right now is a disaster. All right, but we can't ignore Amazon. I know I trashed Amazon a little bit in the beginning of this talk, but we can't ignore Amazon because this whole coronavirus thing has made them even more powerful. Now, prior to coronavirus, I think Amazon was projected to have like a 47% market share in 2020. Uh, different publications will post different things, but this has since been revised uh, up to 50% in 2020 or even over 50% for some of the reports as a result of coronavirus causing this new normal in e-commerce. So you can't neglect Amazon. And one of the best people that we have to talk about Amazon is Brad Moss. He is the former head of Seller Central. So he has a lot of ties to Amazon. And the fact that he implemented Seller Central means that he has intimate knowledge of it. And he's going to talk about what's working in 2020 and what's different in selling on Amazon. Greg Mercer, longtime supporter of Seller Summit, CEO, founder of Jungle Scout, the primary tool that I use for all my Amazon efforts. He's going to teach us how to get reviews in 2020. So be sure to be sure to catch that one. And the tools of the trade here, I already mentioned Seller Labs. Uh, GetTita. GetTita is a tool that is incredible for getting reimbursed on Amazon. So if you've been selling on Amazon for any length of time, you know that Amazon routinely loses their inventory, loses your inventory, or they kind of nickel and dime you for things that aren't quite right. And what Getita does, they have an army of humans, and these aren't outsourced people, these are employees of Getita that will go out and get reimbursements for you. So this actually service with the offer that they're giving Seller Summit attendees, they're reimbursing $400. So you basically get $400 free if you use Getita. And so it's a no brainer to sign up, especially if you sell in volume on Amazon. Product Labs is Brad Moss's company. And he actually offers consulting for Amazon. And Jungle Scout is the leader in Amazon research tools. They've actually added a number of new features that are incredible. And my favorite feature right now is the product supplier database, where you can actually try to find out uh, where other people are sourcing their products from in a really nice to use interface. That's really inexpensive as well. All right, so not everything is pos positive in Amazon land. In the past year, Chinese sellers now outnumber US sellers on Amazon. And the top 10,000, China actually has 49% versus 47% in the US. And unfortunately, and I, you know, I'm Chinese, but unfortunately, when there's more Chinese sellers, the amount of counterfeits has risen as well. So one in 25 products now have reviews with counterfeit complaints. And one in three products in key categories like apparel, headphones, and reviews, they have reviews with counterfeit complaints. So we have our buddy Steven Weigler here. He's going to talk about a low cost strategy to protect against Chinese knockoffs. And the key hint here, it's not about patents. He has a really good methodology to stop copycats in their tracks. And he's got a good track record for it too. So be sure to attend his talk as well. And his company is called Total TM. 
Uh, Total TM is actually a subdivision of his overall firm, which is called Emerge Council. He offers trademark services and IP protection. So if you're worried about getting knocked off, be sure to check out his services. And also efficiency these days is more important than ever. So increasing the speed of fulfillment, the quality of your products and keeping costs really low. So Liz Mercer, she's, she's Greg's wife, but the reason why I asked her to talk is because she runs this seven figure e-commerce store over at Sleek Form and she sells furniture. And as you know, when you're selling oversized items, your supply chain is very important. So she's gonna talk about how to understand the big picture when managing supply chain, because the margin for error for oversized products especially is very, very slim. Mike Jackness. Mike Jackness recently sold his business Color It, and he's actually been chilling. He, he still has a bunch of other e-commerce businesses, but the reason he's been chilling is because he has his whole team in the Philippines and he actually has an office there right now, and a lot of his things have been automated over there. So he's going to talk about how to create a team in the Philippines to manage operations. And he's actually going to have his head over there join him in the talk as well. And then Scott Volker, you know, what I like about Scott is he's really good at helping people narrow down and focus on, you know, what really matters in your business. So his, the title of his talk is going to be how to get massive results in your business and do what actually truly matters, what truly moves the needle. And then Charles Mullins, um, he is a big, big wig over at Quiet Light Brokerage, and he's gonna talk about how to boost the value of your business with math and logic. Now, a lot of us don't think about selling our business until we're actually ready to sell, but I've actually seen this presentation, it is excellent. It's gonna teach you all the little things that you need to implement in your business as you are running it so that you can actually maximize its value when it's time to sell your business. He's also going to talk about how to value your business and how to actually extract every last penny uh, you know, of value for your business. And there's a lot more to it than you think. So be sure to check his talk. All right. And Quiet Light Brokerage is our premium sponsor for Seller Summit. And they are the guys that I go to when I want to buy and sell a business. They are the go-to guys for Mike Jackness, among a, no, a whole bunch of other Seller Summit uh, attendees. Quite, I've known Joe Valley for a long time now. I really trust these guys. Uh, Intelligentsia, they were known as Second Office, but they actually recently got acquired and changed their name. But what Intelligentsia is, it's actually a firm in the Philippines that will help hook you up with Filipino VAs that specialize in e-commerce. And what's nice is they have their own offices, so the internet is always up and they don't get brownouts or power outages as well. I got my VA through Intelligentsia and she is one of the best employees that I've ever had. SKUVault is a piece of software that allows you to manage your inventory across different platforms. So let's say you're selling in your own online store, Amazon, Walmart, eBay, all these different platforms, SKUVault allows you to manage all these platforms in one easy to use interface. Pam Kale, she runs RPC Logistics. She is, she's been a longtime sponsor of Seller Summit. She recently went out on her own and I trust Pam implicitly. She will hold your hand through the entire freight forwarding process. And then finally, there's Brex, a, a new sponsor to Seller Summit. They offer this really cool card that will allow you to float all of your uh, spend or your credit for a full 60 days without paying any interest. And as you know, we're running an inventory business and it's really important to be able to float your money and make the most and leverage the most out of your dollars as possible. All right, and so those are just a sampling of all the talks that are gonna be given at Seller Summit. And as I mentioned before, we are gonna give away special offers from our sponsors only to live attendees who actually attend these certain sessions live. Here's just a sampling of the prizes. So Getita, as I mentioned before, they're gonna give you $400 in free reimbursements. And you actually, and we're purposely keeping it a mystery which talks will go with which prizes. And so just make sure you attend live. Intelligentsia is gonna give you one month free of their digital marketing services. Emerge Council will give you a free IP strategy consult for your business. And then we're gonna actually pick one person to actually get a free trademark filing. Jungle Scout is offering a 15 free day trial and 30% off of their services. PickFu is offering 50% off of two polls. Gorgeous is offering a six month free via a special Gorgeous stimulus package. Seller Labs is offering 30% off of their tools. And Quiet Light is offering a free course on how to buy and sell businesses. And this is a course that they are currently selling for $1,000. And then finally, RPC Logistics is offering 10% off of freight forwarding up to $100.
All right, and so hope you guys are excited about the lineup as much as I am. And unlike prior years, when we actually have a full staff helping to run the Seller Summit, uh, because it's virtual this year, it's just Tony and I. And so if you have any questions, be sure to hit us up. Uh, one of us are going to be constantly monitoring the live chat and uh, monitoring the emails as well. All right, and so really excited for the talks. Hope, you, hope I've made you guys excited about this as well.